The life story of Amos and Andy, written by Joe Connolly and Bob Mosier, with Ed Murrow, Bill Hay, Bing Crosby, Jack Benny, Lowell Thomas, Jeff Alexander's music, yours truly, Harlow Wilcox, and starring in their own life story, Freeman Gosden and Charles Carell. Amos and Andy! The 10,000 independent Rexall druggists salute Amos and Andy as they start their second quarter of a century on the air. Tonight, by bringing you their life story. Tomorrow, with the start of a special Amos and Andy sale. Yes, tomorrow dozens, literally dozens, of Rexall products will be sold at exactly half price. Later in the program, we will list many of these half price items. So, friends, make up your minds right now to stock up. Because every time you buy, you save at the Amos and Andy sale. It starts tomorrow and goes on for two weeks at Rexall Drug Stores everywhere. And here to introduce the life story of Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll, Amos and Andy is one of America's most distinguished commentators. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ed Murrell. Tonight, we of the Columbia Broadcasting System pay tribute to Amos and Andy. For 25 years, Amos and Andy have been a familiar part of the American scene. But who are Amos and Andy? Where did they come from? Tonight, for the first time, the creators of these beloved characters step out from behind the masks of their famous portrayals to dramatize their own story. The story of Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll. I know of no one better qualified to help tell you this story than the voice so long associated with the history of Amos and Andy. Good evening. This is Bill Hay. Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll first meet one rainy night in Durham, North Carolina, right after World War I. Young Peoria-born Charlie Correll had been sent down from Chicago to stage a local amateur show. The cast was rehearsing on the second floor of the Elks Lodge, and Charlie, at the piano, was having his trouble with the chorus. All right, kids, here we go again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Hold it, hold it, hold it. You there, Dottie, on the end. You're cuter than a barrel of monkeys, but would you do your Uncle Charlie a favor and try to remember your left foot from your right? <laughs> that's right, that's the one. Uh, excuse me. You want to see me? Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but you are Carell, aren't you? That's right, Charlie Carell. Can I do something for you? I'm Freeman Gosden. I just started with a company producing shows, and they sent me down to pick up some scripts and music. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you're Gosden. Uh, be right with you, kids. How are you, Freeman? Well, I got all the stuff back at the hotel. Say, uh, you're putting this same show on over in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. We start rehearsals Monday. Well, then, listen, uh... How about getting up in front of these kids and showing them this step? I've got my hands full with the piano. Be glad to, Charlie. Uh, listen, folks, this is my new partner, Freeman Gosden. Oh, that sounds good. Now, he knows this number, and he's going through it with you. So watch him, girls. All right, girls, here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Turn, two, three. Now you have it. beginning of a partnership was formed. For the next few years, they traveled all over the South, producing amateur shows, learning, working together. Those were lean years, the hard years. The boys did everything, produced, directed, wrote, and even performed in some of the shows. Then, one night in New Orleans, they were talked into appearing on a strange new device, radio. 
Say, this is something, isn't it, guys? The fellow says we sing into this big megaphone here. You think anybody will actually hear us? Well, one of the fellows here was telling me this morning they got a phone call from a woman who lives a mile away from the station. No fooling. <laughs> oh, that fellow with the earphones is waving at us again. Stand by. You're on the air. Okay, Charlie, hit it. Gorgeous, gorgeous, everyone knows. They say you're gorgeous, gorgeous from your head to your toes. Mm-hmm. As a kid of ten, you were a wow, 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 wow. You were pretty then, but look at you, Charlie. What? Look, you're simply gorgeous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, that was their first appearance on radio. But outside of a call from the woman who lived a mile away from the station, nothing came of it. Two years later, found them working in Chicago, still waiting for that elusive big break. Hello? Uh, Charlie, this is Guy. Well, where are you? I've been waiting for you. I got us a date. Two girls from Evanston. One of their fathers owns a restaurant. Well... (laughs) I just left Bob O'Neill's office. Now, he runs radio station WEBH up at the Edgewater Beach Hotel. Now, he wants us to go on the radio as a singing team, and I told him we'd do it. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, kid. How much are we going to have to pay him? (laughs) Not a cent, Charlie. And get this. At midnight, after the station closes down, the hotel gives us a blue plate supper free. Yes, the boys went on the air nightly for W.E.B.H. They sang songs. When the red, red robin comes bob, bob, bobbing along, along. They told jokes. Say, Goz, I'm going home tonight and give my father a bath. Give your father a bath? Of course. I've been sponging off the old man for years. (laughs) (laughs) Rose, announce. Directed. Finally, six months and 135 blue plate suppers later, they got that big break. Ben McKenna, the head of the powerful Tribune station, WGN, sent for them. Well, let me get this straight, Mr. McKenna. You want us to go on the air every night and dramatize a, a, a comic strip? That's right, boys. One of the comics from the Tribune, the Gumps, Chester and the family. Now, isn't that an idea? Well, uh, well, yes, Mr. McKenna, but we're a singing team. I don't think we could handle it. Well, I think it'll be a great series for you. Well, I tell you, if, if that's the kind of a thing you're after, I got sort of an idea. Well, what is it? Well, you see, I was born and raised in Richmond, Virginia, and Charlie's traveled all over the South. What would you think of us doing a couple of color characters? Yeah, now there's something we can handle. Well, I don't know about that. I, I never thought of... Uh, that. Mr. McKenna, there's never been anything like it on the air. I tell you what, why don't you boys see if you can come up with a script and some characters? Spend a week or so on it. Then we can take it from there. A week? Why, Mr. McKenna, we'll have a script for you the first thing in the morning, won't we, Charlie? You can bet your bottom dollar on it. <laughs> What time is it, kid? Well, it's daybreak, whatever time that is. And we had to tell him we'd have a script in the morning. Charlie, I've been thinking over these comic strips. Now, now take Mutt and Jeff. Now, that's popular. Yeah. One fellow is a great big man, and the other one's a little bit of fella. And that's what we've got to get. Yeah, but the people aren't going to see us on the radio. Well, we've got to do it with our voices, Maybe if one of us had a high voice and the other one a low voice, that would give them a picture. Yeah. Say, guys, you're right as two rabbits. Yeah, you know, Charlie, I think we're getting somewhere. You you can get your voice down pretty low, can't you? Well, yes, I can get down pretty low. Uh, keep going. Get down lower. Uh, like down here? Not bad. Now, listen, uh, see if you can put a... See if you can put a little dialect in it. Yeah, well... I'm going to stay right down here and talk like this here. 
Uh, how did it sound, Brother Gosling? Sounds great. Now, you hold that voice, and I'll try to get a high one. Yeah, I'll do that. And you get on up there. Uh, how does it sound up here? No, go get up higher. Get, uh, get way up there. Uh, how does it sound up here? Yeah, put a little dialect in the thing. And put a rasp in there, like that uh, little fellow that worked in the drugstore in Atlanta. Uh, yeah, put a little rasp in there. Uh, how do that sound to you now, Brother Carrill? That show sounds good to me, boy. I think we done got something here. Boy, I sure hope so. and gentlemen, this is your Rexall family druggist with a few of the half-price specials at the Amos and Andy sale that begins tomorrow. These next two weeks are the first in the history of our Rexall drugstores when dozens, literally dozens, of guaranteed Rexall products will be sold at exactly half price. Best of all, this two-week sale is store-wide. You'll find almost a hundred super specials Plus, this unprecedented free offer. You get an unbreakable plastic tumbler in your choice of beautiful colors. Absolutely free when you buy any of a dozen special items. So, friends, be prepared for overwhelming savings at the Amos and Andy sale. Tomorrow through February 28th at Rexall Drug Stores everywhere. One month later, Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll went on the air as Sam and Henry. And two years later, it was the top program in the Chicago area. Success seemed to be theirs. Then one day, they went to Ben McKenna with a proposition. Well, that's the idea, Mr. McKenna. We heard that one of the big broadcasting companies is starting a coast-to-coast network. Yes, and we'd sure like to get on that network, Mr. McKenna. Boys, I understand your enthusiasm, but we here at the station want to keep Sam and Henry as our exclusive feature. But, Mr. McKenna, we think this is the opportunity of a lifetime for us. I know that, boys. I know it. But after all, we own the name Sam and Henry, and we don't want to make any rash move and take the chance of ruining the show. All right, Mr. McKenna. Thank you just the same. Come on, Charlie. Well, he turned us down cold, Gus. What are we going to do now? What do we do, Charlie? We quit. Yeah, well, I... Quit? (laughs) Quit, Sam and Henry? Now, look, Charlie, we can get just so far and no farther staying here on one station. Yes, but, gods, we couldn't even take Sam and Henry with us. The newspaper owns the name. We'd have to start over from scratch. All right, we'll start over from scratch. Guys, I don't know about this. Suppose we're a flop. Now, look, Charlie, I don't know what it is. Call it intuition or whatever you want to. But I just have a feeling we're doing the right thing. Well... If you feel that strong about it, guys, okay, let's take a crack at it. After all, we've come a long way from the days of the Blue Plate Supper. (laughs) Thirty days later, their contract expired, and the boys signed with the network. Opening night was only a few weeks away, and the network was pressing for details on the new show. Well, thanks for calling, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Yes, but we'd rather not release the name of the new program yet. All right, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Johnson. Charlie, they're getting anxious about the name in New York. So am I. I wish we had one. (laughs) No, the name of the show means everything. Yes, Charlie, and we've been working on it for a week, and, well, nothing seems to sound as good as Sam and Henry. Yeah. Well, come on, guys. Let's go out and get some supper. We need a snappy name like Jack and Mac or Tim and Tommy. Yeah. Push the elevator button, guys. Charlie, we must have made a list of over 500 names. Yeah, I know it. Oh, say, uh, how about Slappy and Happy? 
<laughs> no, I don't think so, Charlie. Well, here's the elevator. I wonder if Willie's on duty. He's a character, isn't he? Yeah. Well, well, Chucklin, Charlie, and Stephen Freeman. How are you, boys? Oh, fine, Willie. Step right in. How are my two friends of the airways? Fine. Say, I hear you got a new program. Yeah, that's right. It starts next week, Willie. We're going coast to coast. Well, how do you like that? Ain't you the pair for the air? <laughs> Third floor. Well, well, look who's here. My football playing friend. Step right in, famous Amos. How's everything going on the elevator, Willie? Having my ups and downs. <laughs> Second floor. Going down. Uh, move back. Let the janitor get in with the stepladder. Well, make way for my old friend, Handy Andy. First floor, there ain't no more. Going up. Going up. Hey, Charlie, what we need in these names is something that'll catch on, something that'll be easy to, to uh... Charlie, what's the matter? Did you hear what Willie called those two fellows? Yeah, uh... Famous Amos and, uh... Handy Andy. But, Charlie, what I mean is, uh, Amos and Andy. Yeah, Amos and Andy. Well, they are both four-letter names. They are both sort of euphonious. And Amos is a biblical character. Yeah, and not only that. If we ever play a benefit, they list the names alphabetically. We'd always be right smack at the top. <laughs> Yes, Amos and Andy started on the network from coast to coast, 15 minutes nightly at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, emanating from Chicago. About the third day, they started getting out-of-town newspaper clippings reviewing their show. Hey, Charlie, here's a review from a New York paper right on top. Oh, boy, what's it say, kid? Well, it, it's, uh, 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 you'd better read the headline yourself, Charlie. Yeah. Amos and Andy... Radio's biggest flop has arrived. The much-heralded Amos and Andy made its debut on the airwaves last night at 7 o'clock with a thud, I might add. Don't read it, kid. It'll make you sick. Yeah, here's another one. This one's from Washington, D.C. You read it. What does it say? Amos and Andy disappointing. After a build-up of two weeks by network... Amos and Andy followed a sad organ theme with something about a fresh air taxi cab. This type of program has no place in radio. Holy mackerel. Look at here, another one. And they're all bad. Yeah. Boy, Simon Henry looks awful good right now, doesn't it? Charlie, there's no two ways about it. We're a flop. But what makes me feel so bad about it is that I talked you into it. Well, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't feel that way. We both went into the thing, and with our eyes open. Well, it's just that I got so enthusiastic at the time, Charlie. I wonder if you'd excuse me. I I think I'll go out and walk around by myself. Well, I guess he wants to be alone. But even if the kid doesn't know it, I'm out there walking right with him. Will you look at all the items I've marked in the Rexall magazine ad? The items that go on sale for just half price at the Amos and Andy sale tomorrow. Yes, indeed, ma'am. This advertisement in Life, Look, Collier's, Saturday Evening Post, and Farm Journal gives all the half price items in the sale. I've marked a dozen things my family needs right now, like Rexall cold tablets and cough syrup and vitamin B12. You'll find several other Rexall vitamin products at half price, too. Rexall Theravins, Alpha Caps, Poly Drops, and Poly Caps. And I'm going to get both of the Caranome Beauty Specials, the lipstick and one of the creams, at half price. You'll find stag toiletries for men at half price, too. And don't forget the free tumblers. 
and all the other magnificent specials throughout the Rexall drugstore. I won't. In fact, I'm going to make several shopping trips to the Amos and Andy sale. Well, ma'am, it continues for two full weeks. Tomorrow through February 28th at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Amos and Andy continued on the network for the second week. There was no fan mail, and most of the critics had reviewed the show unfavorably. This, I believe, was the lowest point in the lives of Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll. Then one morning, to get their minds off the program, the boys decided to play golf at the Tamashanter Golf Club in Chicago. Well, get on your shoes, Charlie, and let's get out and play nine holes anyway. Yeah, and I hope we don't run into anybody. You know how they are when they think your show isn't going so well. Yeah, well, let's get going. Yeah. Uh-oh. Look who's coming in the locker room. That young fellow that sings with Paul Whiteman, Bing Crosby. And he sees us. Uh, hi, Bing. Yeah, uh, hello, Bing. Hi, fellas. <laughs> you blast that rubber around a bit, huh? Uh, yeah, we're going to play nine holes, I guess. Hey, uh, by the way, I caught your last three shows. Oh, you did, huh? Well, you know, I think that little opera you got there is going to catch on. What do you mean? I don't know. There's something there that, that makes you want to listen tomorrow night. I really think you got something, boys. And I like that, that Andy when he says, uh, I was regusted. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, Bing. That makes us feel pretty good. Then, a few days later, on Michigan Boulevard, the boys ran into a man they'd met a few years before in New York. Well, Freeman and Charlie, how are you, boys? Well, Jack Benny! <laughs> nice to see you, Jack. I hear you open tomorrow night over at the Palace Theater. Yes, I got in from New York yesterday. Say, they're all talking about that radio show of yours back there. Uh, talking about it? Yeah. You know, to tell you the truth, at first, I don't know, I I didn't like it. But after a few times, it, it, it kind of grows on you. You know what I mean? Even the kids backstage are listening to it. Well, thanks a lot, Jack. Yeah, well, we sure hope it catches on. Yes, boys, I really think you've got something there. of other people began to feel the way Jack and Bing did. The fan mail began to trickle in. The boys' spirits lifted. They worked harder. They experimented with their voices and created new characters. First, they added a great favorite with the listeners, Lightning. Ah, uh, yeah, sir, Miss Amos, I'll whiz right on over there. <laughs> the social man about town. Henry Van Porter. Well, now, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I'm having a fitting with my tailor. He's put the new patch on the seat of my pants. <laughs> the fussy, hen-pecked Brother Crawford. I want to tell you boys that my wife is very unhappy, and she won't stand for it. <laughs> yes, and as time went on, all of those other warm human characters, Ruby Taylor, Miss Blue, Sapphire, the old battle axe. <laughs> Pat Pending, Fluky Harris, Fred Wendell, and Madam Queen. And, of course, the greatest character of all, that lovable old rascal, the Kingfish. Now, wait a minute, sir. Don't forget we are all brothers in that great fraternity to miss at night of the sea. <laughs> Perhaps the greatest tribute of all paid to Freeman Gosden and Charles Carell was one night at a huge benefit in New York's Madison Square Garden. Lowell Thomas, the famous radio news commentator who preceded Amos and Andy for years on the air, was chosen to introduce the boys. I can think of few things likely to give me greater pleasure than to introduce your radio favorites. When I die... This would be my epitaph. 
Here lies the body of a man who was heard by millions of people who were waiting to hear Amos and Andy. Well, that was it. That was their success. The rest of the story is familiar to all of us. As the years went on, Amos and Andy made new changes in their program. The most significant being when they went from 15 minutes to a half hour. Changes come and go. But I'm sure you feel, as I do, that Amos and Andy have never left that wonderful place in our hearts. Now, before I turn you back to Ed Murrow, I'd like to say once more, as I did for so many years, bidding you all good night and good night to you all. Well, that's the story of Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll. The story of Amos and Andy. Two names that are sure to go down as part of American folklore. It's only fitting that tonight the entire radio industry gives special recognition to these two men. To pay this tribute, we have an event unique in broadcasting history. The heads of two great networks, David Sarnoff of NBC and William Paley of CBS, appearing on the same program to pay tribute to Amos and Andy. First, I would like to introduce the chairman of the board of the Radio Corporation of America and head of the National Broadcasting Company, General Sarnoff. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am very proud to join hands with my friend Bill Paley, chairman of the board of Columbia Broadcasting System, in paying tribute to Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll, who created and portrayed the characters of Amos and Andy on radio for the past quarter of a century. I extend to you boys my highest regard and esteem for your brilliant and important pioneer work in the progress of radio broadcasting and for your faithful adherence to the highest ideals of good entertainment. We in the National Broadcasting Company are proud to have introduced this program to the listeners of America and to have broadcasted over our coast-to-coast -coast network for 15 years. Congratulations to you, Freeman, and to you, Charlie. And now, the chairman of the board of the Columbia Broadcasting System, William S. Paley. I'm very happy to join General Sarnoff, whose leadership and contributions have meant so much to broadcasting, in paying tribute to Freeman Gosden and Charlie Correll. By bringing pleasure to millions of listeners for more than a quarter of a century, they have firmly established themselves in the affections of their fellow citizens. They have also created a great radio institution, one which I believe will live forever in the folklore of America. Freeman and Charlie, it gives me great pleasure to salute you, not only as an old friend, but also on behalf of the Columbia Broadcasting System and the countless millions of your devoted listeners throughout the country. Our warmest wishes go out to you both. This is Freeman. Hey, good night. Charlie and I would like to thank everyone who appeared on our program tonight. But most of all, we want to extend our deep appreciation to you, our listeners, who have made it possible for us to start our 26th year on the air. Yes, that's right. Remember, beginning tomorrow through February 28th, it's the special Amos and Andy sale. And be sure to be with us at the same time next Sunday 
when your Rexall druggist will again present the Amos and Andy Show, transcribed and directed by Cliff Powell. Stay tuned for the Bing Crosby program, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. WBAN in Danville, Illinois.